So today we're having a look at what types of organizations are eligible for certification against the Global Automotive Scheme, IETF 16949. So guys, um, who, what types of organizations are eligible to get certification to IETF 16949? The key word yeah. would be manufacturing, so organisations that make something, so there is a, yeah. a manufacturing process at the heart of what they do, um, and the product that they produce needs to end up in, in yeah, a car, a bus, a truck, or a motorbike. Is right, that so level? often we hear the term automotive supply chain, so are vehicle makers eligible for ITF, people that assemble the vehicles? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and from what I've heard, there are a number of vehicle makers around the world that are certified yeah. to um, ITF 16949. Now, obviously, a lot of the 75,000 organizations certified will be up the high part of the supply chain, maybe tier one. Yeah. If I'm at tier three or tier four in the supply chain, for example, making screws, yeah. Am I eligible for IETF certification? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. If you uh, can prove that that screw is indeed going into a automotive vehicle. Okay. So I would need to be able to show the certification body that some of those screws that I make will end up going in a car, a bus, a truck, or a motorcycle. Right. Yeah. Is that that's, that's, a, a, yeah. a fair statement? Yeah. And one level below, what about a steel maker? Yeah. Is a steel maker eligible? Yeah. For ATF one six nine four nine. Yeah. So yeah. raw material um, organisations, uh, organisations in the lower tiers of the supply chain, right up to the vehicle makers. And again, we, you know, the IETF welcomed Jaguar Land Rover as a as a new member um, earlier this year. Yeah. And I know from from Jaguar Land Rover, all of their manufacturing sites are certified. So a good example of how right. some of the um, OEMs do apply it within their own facilities, but also yeah. uh, require it of their supply chains. Yeah, right. And what about finishing services? If an organization is painting product or heat treating product, is that deemed as being manufacturing? Yep. Again, it's, it's sort of changing the, um, it's adding value almost to something so in the case yeah, of... It's going through a manufacturing process, is, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, and this week I've been in a pressing company. Mm -hmm. So they make metal pressings. They buy tools. The people that make the tools, are they eligible for IETF 16949? No. No. Those tools are not going into a vehicle. Right. That's a simple way of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you wouldn't put the tool in the vehicle. You put the part that comes off the tool. In the vehicle, you might put it in a vehicle to move it, but that that wouldn't. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> and, and what about packaging? Can no, people that no. are providing the boxes, the cardboard boxes, are they eligible? The manufacturers of those boxes? No. no. Once again, uh, we're talking parts specifically. Yeah. But things like right. oils, for example. So yeah. um, oils that are used and um, put into the vehicle in the production facility, the manufacturer right. of that product would be eligible. So not oils used in the manufacturing machines, but oils that will end up in the vehicle Correct. that is a saleable product. Yeah. And what about service parts? So if my car breaks down, I could go into a, a recognized franchise dealer right. and get a replacement. Are they eligible people making the service the parts? The service parts, yes, to the OEM spec, yeah. those are eligible. Yeah. Right. And if my car is 10 years old and I go into an aftermarket organization, yeah. are those parts going to be manufactured under an ITF 16949 scope? Not necessarily, no. So aftermarket, definitely not. Some of the products that you can buy in a high street um, yeah. Store may well have been produced in a in a an organisation that is certified. Right. But yeah, but Devon's point, I think, is they are made to the OEM spec yeah. yes. and supplied through an OEM contract. Yeah. Right. yeah, and does ITF ever change eligibility? I believe I've heard of sanctioned interpretations. Yes, uh, recently. So can you give an example? 
Uh, recently, we issued a sanctioned interpretation and to include the eligibility of reflective vests, uh, triangles. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because I know in some countries that's a legal requirement. Yeah, correct. But they are supplied with yeah, the vehicle. So, it's yeah. to be so if you buy a new vehicle, that may already be included yeah, within right. the it's, vehicle. Yeah. So I guess, uh, viewers, it's an idea to keep up to date through the sanctioned interpretations because the eligibility in the coming months and years may change. But the core of certification are people that make components or anything that ends up in a car, a bus, a truck or a motorcycle. And the organization can be at any level within the automotive supply chain. So thank you for that insight and clarification.